another one. In this week's video, I'm going to tie this fly for you. It's again size 18 and it's going to be one of my go-to flies in my new box that I'm making for you and for lucky winner that I'm going to announce sometime in the future when I finish the box. So without any further ado, let's go into materials and after materials list, uh, let's go into tying and some tips. I will start with a hook size 18 jig some 3 mm silver tungsten beads viva strut in size 12-0 orange color for the tail I'm going to use Coq de Leon ribbing is going to be silver wire very fine and for the dubbing I'm going to use ice pico dubbing with blended with some hair's mask in olive and natural to suggest some legs, I'm going to use some CDC. So I'm going to start with a hooking device. As I said, it's size 18 with a 3 mm silver bead. And instead of going regular way, like so, catching materials and so on and so on, I'm going to start with reversed jam hitch. So for that, you need to place your thread as you would normally do. And with a tag end, just go around the hook. From behind so you want to start this gem hitch more or less where you want your body to end for this fly at least and then just go a couple of turns pull forward transfer the sides and then continue so when I cover almost the whole uh, shank I'm just gonna cut this tag end because it's already secured I'm gonna cover whole shank I'm twisting the thread a little bit now here at this point I want to catch I want to take silver wire and attach it now if you attach from the far side of you, of you so near the lens of the, of the camera it's going to be actually easier for you to rib it later so I just counter spin my thread because in that case it will jump on the wire if it's not counter spun which I will do just now you try to catch it and it just fights you so you don't want to do that counter spin it let it work its magic oops like so and then with a couple of wraps secure this wire on the sides on the side of the hook now as I said for the tail I'm going to use cocktail Leon and I'm using this um, waist part of the feather no need to use that nice those nice barbs so just those nice barbs I, I like to use for dry flies so I'm just gonna eyeball the length and then again counter spin the thread so it will jump into you into your fingers and then and I'll just place it on the on the center of the hook and then with soft wrap pull upwards soft wrap pull upwards and notice the tail is not running away soft wrap pull upwards my thread is a little bit twisted so I want it untwisted so soft wrap up soft wrap up what this does when you do the soft wrap you ensure that you are not pushing away your materials while keeping them on the in the position and then when you pull upwards the tag that's already around let me show you that with a needle so the previous tag I, I made, made here is actually when you pull this one when you pull this one up this one actually goes down and and uh, it as resulting uh, in locking materials properly now I'm gonna stop exactly here and I'm gonna cut the waist end of the Coq de Leon and now notice the dubbing the dubbing as you noticed when I was listing materials was in the coffee grinder coffee mill whatever you call it so it's already loosened up so it's very easy to, to pinch, pinch out a very small piece of dubbing and apply it in 
clockwise direction. And notice how thin noodle I'm, I'm making here. I want to make thin noodle and because there is no taper on this, you can taper the noodle. There is no tapering thread, so you can taper the noodle if you want. So this is what I did, just a couple of wraps. You can even see the thread through some of the of some of these wraps of uh, dubbing that goes around your thread. If you don't like that, you can color the thread with Sharpie uh, or some other permanent marker, who cares? So let's go wrapping. I just did opposite than what I was doing. Okay, so soft wrap up. And now it's not so important. Now, as you can see, near the tail there is a hot spot. If you don't like it, don't make it. But I like those hot spots and those tiny nymphs. Now, the reason why I put wire at the far side of the hook is notice what happens. I go under the hook, so it means away of the tails because tails is tails are on the hook, and then I go over. But by the time I get over, the wire is not touching tails. If the wire was on the near side, immediately it would go over the tails and it will it will push them away from me. So that would result in uh, uh, tails that are not centered. And then just go with your wire, catch it, rib your fly, and then here with just a couple of wraps. Secure it, break it off. Simple as that. Now make a small dubbing loop and just what I do now, I'm, I'm, I'm twisting the thread because I'm going to twist it in dubbing loop so no need to do too many twists because it's actually going to weaken the thread. A couple of twi twists will uh, make your thread a little bit stronger but too many of them will actually make it weaker which you don't want. You want it to hold. Uh, you can notice that I didn't make thorax at all. Uh, it's because of the next step. Now notice the CDC feather I'm using. It's it's disaster. It it's useless. So it's not useless. I'm gonna place it in the clip. It's perfect for these things. Place it in the clip. Cut. And now I'm gonna use it for nymph. And notice if you can just let me make it closer to the net first. Notice one thing. Notice those tag ends. I didn't go shallow. I want that because when I wrap CDC around the hook, it will fold and it will make this part here a little bit more denser. It looks like a thorax part. You will see in a second. So just Let's go wrapping, and you can go a couple of wraps back, because you need some space for this, and then just wrap everything here. I hold my hook to tighten it a little bit more, and this should be plenty, yeah, that's it. Now, notice this part, I twist main thread around the loop two times, one, two, then two times or three times, who cares? And then one, two, and that's it. Now I can release the pressure and cut this part. Now let's again untwist the thread. Now one thing that I've learned recently, I didn't know that before. Now, as you all know, I'll just make one way finish knot and I will show you at another. When you twist a thread, I'll twist it now and then look what happens. It rolls around it and now look what happened here. 
Now imagine that you do were finishing up with twisted thread, then this little micro twist thing can go into the twist into those wraps and eventually will get stuck and as you try to pull it out you actually break the thread you weaken the knot that's why it's very important that you do the whip finish knot with a flat thread you want your uh, knot to be secured you want your knot to be strong so that would be it of course, if you don't want to have hot spots, just use the thread in olive, and that's it, or any other color for that matter. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and see you next week.